Here is the end of January, or the beginning of February. The uh, cows are looking at me like I'm stupid. There you go. The uh, temperatures went from sub-freezing last week uh, up to uh, 60 degrees today, I believe. So my honeybees are out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make this into a usual YouTube video. But uh, I have a potential new owner for Psycho. Uh, Psycho, to my understanding, is a Sherry design. Uh, somebody inside the owner's manual wrote Sherry in it. So to my understanding, Dodge had a designer or named their design Sherry. Uh, it does look like a Dakota, but believe me, this is a full-size pickup truck. It is a short wheelbase Dodge Ram pickup truck. This is good for off-roading purposes because of the fact that we don't high center the vehicle. Uh, we have a lower cross member on the transmission and the transfer case. Um, I'm going to get into some details. She is not perfect. She was manufactured in 1999 and uh, all the paperwork has 2000 on it. Uh, it has an electronic start, aftermarket electronic start, uh, that stopped working, uh, obviously. Um, the stereo system has been uh, removed completely. I had an aftermarket stereo system in it. This is the numbers, date of manufacture. And you're not going to focus today. Focus! So I hope you can make that out. That's a 1999. That's what it looks like to me right there. Okay, so those are tires. It's supposed to have a 225-75R16XL. The uh, rim's at 16.7. It's got a 5.5 um, bolt pattern. There's the VIN. Truck. Single X. And there's all the information. Um, can't remember where this is built at, but it has all that in the VIN. The uh, seat here, this was like this when I purchased it. This uh, truck wasn't exactly in very good condition, and when I purchased it, I had to replace the engine uh, due to a thrown main bearing on number one because somebody did not tighten down the uh, torque converter properly. So I had a bunch of wobbling, so there was damage on the rear main. I think I have the tray floating around here somewhere. The glass is good. The hood liner, or the roof liner, needs some attention. The front windshield is crack and speckle free. The dash has seen better days, of course. This is a Dodge. The four wheel drive, I'll show in another video. That has been taken out. Uh, that uh, Apparently somebody had broken that. And uh, when I went to go put a 32 ounce soda on it, it ended up in the floor. I have an aftermarket tray down here, center seat, some free chopsticks, that works, seat belts, everything, all the electronic is good, the underdoor panel, it's got a little bit of spotty rust on it, it's not bad. There was a little bit of rub in the door right here, so when you do flex the vehicle, it will, mm -hmm. the door will catch. Seems all look good. The tires and wheels still have nubs on them, as you can see here. And uh, that's my pinky, and it still fits in between these lugs. Here is a normal Dodge key. I don't have a penny with me. But that's where she is at with a normal Dodge key. These are MTs, Kevlar's, MT. We got black rocks, uh, steel wheels, uh, black rock lugs. I've still got the pans on the inside. This is an aftermarket. This is, that's metal. That's not plastic. None of the lights are busted out. It's got a tow hitch on it. I would suggest changing the bolts on the uh, underside of the tow hitch. They're a bit old. 
The tailgate still works. I replaced these in 2013, so both of those are new. The bumper's got a bit of rust on it. There's a few uh, dings on this side from off-roading. It's got a little bit of rust. There's the lift, and those are uh, wedge type. So we can put a different pinion angle on it so we're not racking. The U-joints, uh, if you don't adjust the pinion when you start going up with your vehicles, then you'll start binding up your drive shafts. And when you start binding up your drive shafts, then start running into some, some issues with wasting U-joints and having to replace U-joints. There's the door jam. The door jam is clean. Still got the rubber on it. So we got good metal on the doors. The doors are solid. There's a bit of rust that has uh, gotten a bit worse throughout the years down here. She is dirty. She hasn't had a uh, bath in a while. It's got uh, shocks and pucks. And it's got the OEM brake lines, everything else. I only went up three and a quarter, or three and a half. We got two sets of aftermarket fog lamps. These were a cheap $60. The bumper is, uh, it was removed and it was put back, and it's uh, its never been straight since. Uh, I was going to take it off and put it a uh, off-road bumper on it. It's a Laramie LCLT interior. Here are the switches. For the two sets of lights. Here is the information. Plug gap, emissions, everything else. 5.2 liter, I put the 318 back in it. That's the air intake. That's the refrigerant. And that's the uh, aftermarket suspension. The battery has died. The engine is in excellent condition. This is not the original engine. Uh, this engine came out of a club cab or a crew club cab. Um, the spark plugs, the distributor, the rotor. So the distributor, the rotor, the rotor bug, rotor, whatever you want to call it, as you can see back there. And then the spark plug wires are all new. Uh, those are less than a year old. Uh, there's the air intake. This is several years old. I have an oil kit for that as well. The uh, liner's been removed. This is the condenser. I don't use the air conditioner in it. I've actually unplugged the AC. The radiator's still good. So, I gotta climb up here since I'm short. And it's been a while since that cap's been off. So, this is what the radiator looks like. There's the cap. You see, there's no oil or oil deposits. She's a bit low, so we should be able to see inside there. There's a little bit of rust. No, no stop leak, no build up. She doesn't overheat. The uh, coil is uh, aftermarket. And there's another shot of the plugs. The uh, plenum has the steel belly pan with the hardened bolts with Loctite and it has been modified. And so the baffle in the center that has been cut out. The idle air control valve does give it a bit of issues but it's a cheap part that can be replaced. I had a rupture in one of the power steering lines a few years, probably about two or three years ago. 
and it's been sitting so we've got a bit of a leak here so that's uh, not a big concern so that's just old gooey power steering fluid uh, but that line right there I think was the high pressure line I replaced that high pressure line the pump does whine and the pump is whining because it's being overworked because I have LT-285-75R16. It's a 126-123Q uh, radial DOT-7Y. And I believe this was a 10-ply. So we got 7, 3, 2, and 2. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Um, I think this was a... 10 ply tire, uh, if I'm uh, remembering that correctly. Yeah, that was a 10 ply tire. I have the OEM uh, tires as well. This caliper, the pistons in this caliper were kind of sticky uh, the last time I run it. Uh, the uh, rotors have all been replaced, the uh, ball joints have been replaced, uh, the U joints are I would say probably about two maybe three years old the fluids in the differentials have all been replaced the uh, steering dampener has been replaced <sighs> oh I'm getting too old for that there are no holes underneath here a bit of a seal leak right there where the transmission joins and she's been sitting for a while so everything is uh, kind of gooey to stop from rust that is a uh, rubber gasket on both the oil pan as well as the transmission pan transmission fluid was changed last year uh, those are the lines right there there's the u-joint there's the other u-joint I don't understand why they put would put electrical there, but you might want to bag that or relocate it. But if you're just going to be doing uh, daily driving with it, <coughs> she's been sitting for a while. Uh, that U joint's been replaced. That U joint has been replaced. Uh, those are RC or Rough Country uh, leveling kit with shocks. Both sides, everything's been torqued down this year. This is what the exhaust looks like. I had a uh, turnout pipe, uh, but I kind of, how can I say, uh, got into a bit of a rock with it and uh, kind of bent it a little bit, so I cut it off right there. And it's a pretty decent pipe. It's still got the cats on it, still got, I put a new oxygen sensor in it uh, probably about three years ago. The frame is boxed in, starting right here. So as you can see that box right there in the frame and that box goes all the way up front. So if you're going to do any rock crawling with it, you want to continue that box. It has larger aftermarket fuel line. So if you see the size of that fuel line right there, that's aftermarket. The uh, fuel pump was replaced two years ago. And as you can see the uh, electronics on the top of the pumpkin. And as you can see, the distance from the wheel drum to the tire is uh, about two and a half to three inches. So it's got wheel spacers on it. They've been on there for, I would say, about four years, five years. Oh. And uh, I've rotated and changed tires twice since I've uh, had them installed, or I installed them, excuse me. This is the uh, rear end. Springs, spring perches. There's the diff. Like I said, when they sit for a while, they tend to get kind of gooey sometimes. There's the brake line. And that's the end of the video.